Another day, another device, another video. This is a Nintendo DSi. We're going retro on this one. And this was brought to us for a bad charging port. Here, maybe I'm going to go to the overhead camera. Okay, so I'm going to take my power. And I'm going to plug it right there. And we got nothing. And if I press, put some pressure on it, then the charge light comes on. I'll leave, take the pressure off charge light goes off and it does not stay plugged in easily I mean when you plug those in they should just frankly uh, kind of stay snugged in and this one just falls out so uh, I got a simple solution for this which we would call a hack job um, well I don't know if I want to call it a hack job it's a simple solution and then there's the uh, the more in-depth solution, which would be to replace the port. Now let's see uh, which this needs. Uh, I'm gonna open this up because that's the first step. Okay, now we have it open. I'm gonna jump over here and let's see here. This is the charge port. I wanna show you about the most simple solution that you've ever gosh darn seen. I want to zoom way in here so that we can <clears throat> see what I'm doing. Let's go even more, huh? Nope, that's my maximum with that camera. All right. This little tab here is what holds the plug in. And it gets bent out of shape from being used a lot or if people are playing while it's plugged in and check this out i'm just gonna push that back down okay then you'll see that now when i plug this in there's this little uh let me i gotta try to explain this okay this tab here that i just pushed down clicks in to this little uh, spot here on your charging cord and that's what that's what holds it in good so now when I plug that in it holds in good and I can move it and lift it by it and now it's holding in pretty good you could actually see when the covers off that it's holding into that little spot on the cord that's all you really need it to do now I need to see if this is going to charge the battery. So we come in back uh, with the battery here. I'm going to plug that there and then we're going to see if we get a good charge light here. And there's the charge light. And I can, uh, it kind of comes, cuts in and out. Okay, so. Now this is where uh, as a professional, I'm going to replace the charge port. Customers paying good money to have it be repaired and it shouldn't uh, cut in and out like that. Now uh, if you watch this video because you're trying to fix your own device, you might be just totally fine if uh, you can plug it in and charge it and it's it's charging, you know. But um, you know if you were going to try and play while it was plugged in then it's going to cut in and out and that's going to be aggravating. But if you just were having a hard time getting it to charge, bend that back into place. You know, now if I wiggle it, it cuts out, but you could get it right in the right spot and leave it to charge. Anyway, we're going to replace that charge port. Now, if you're familiar with my videos, you know, I don't like to remove a board from the shell unless it's necessary and this is a case where I don't think it's necessary I am going to take out this one little screw here and that is so that I can lift this up a little bit to put some aluminum tape right there and I'm just gonna protect the shell from a little bit of heat okay if I wanted to I could go all the way up like that let's, let's go ahead and do that now I'm going to also, because I got a little ribbon cable there, I'm going to protect that because while I work in this area, I don't want to accidentally 
uh, Nick, you know, a connector or something stupid like that with the soldering iron. So I put the capped on tape, which is residue free, easy peel. And I'm going to put the aluminum tape right there. Okay, so now I kind of have a work zone where I'm not going to melt any plastics and I can work on this right where it's at. We're going to use low melt solder to remove it. And to do that, I'm going to go under the microscope, turn on my fume extractor, soldering iron, all that sort of stuff. Okay, let's start with putting some flux where we're going to be adding the low melt solder. And I want to use my micro pen because I got tight spots I want to get this in. So I'm going to put a little bit right there. Put some right there. Now these uh, four in the back here are all surface mount. And that makes them really easy to work with when using low melt solder. And then these ones here those are uh, through hole. So we'll have to just try to work those in a little bit better. But ultimately, see this, you could already see it moving. And gone. Okay. Oh, did I rip those off? You gotta be kidding me. Those were already broken. I didn't put any force on there, you know? That, ugh, that's obnoxious. Okay, it's not a big deal. I swear, I swear I didn't break it. You watched the video, you would have seen any amount of force, that thing just fell right out. And maybe that have, you know, this thing's been jostled around, that's probably why it didn't work. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and clear these holes. Let's find my clippers here. Here's the thing. Um, this goes to a via, so I'm gonna have to scrape that. And this one connects to this, so I'll connect those. So when I solder this in, I'm gonna have to make sure that things go where they go. Yeah, what's up? Yeah. Uh huh. It needs to be fixed. Oh, the tilt sensor doesn't work on it. So she wants to buy it and have me repair it when it's repaired, come pick it up. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up. Got a customer wanting to buy Guitar Hero. You know, Guitar Hero stuff is really hard to keep in stock and we uh, tend to underprice it because the prices that you pay on eBay or Amazon, they're just too high. But what happens is everyone looks at those prices online and then sees our in-store prices as a great value. So we're like, had two of these guitars, one worked, one didn't, and she wants both. So she asked if she could buy the broken one contingent that we fix it. And sure, why not? Okay, so here is my replacement part. And it looks like a match. That's good. So what do I got to do here first? I need to understand what's going on here. So I'm thinking if I... Maybe I could put some copper tape to rebuild these pads and then connect them to where they connect. And then I can solder on the new part. That might work. Okay, here's my first piece. Where'd it go? I lost it. 
What? Passports? Yeah, it can be, as long as it's the United States passport. Why? Well, you, you're not going to be able to. Okay, uh, there's one piece, and I'm going to do another one over here. Okay, put that right there. All right, so the glue's not going to hold under the heat, so it's important that I attach these to these traces. So let's scrape a little there and scrape a little there. Okay, and maybe I should have done that before I put the copper tape down. Oh well, you live and learn. Okay, so now I'm going to solder those together. Put some flux there. And we should be able to kind of bind those together. Where'd my solder go? Hold on. Okay, this is a very delicate, hope I don't screw it up. I should actually make sure that this doesn't have any low melt on it because this is not where I want low melt to be. Okay, let's try this, shall we? Oh, I knew that was gonna happen. All right, see, now it's attached. And I'll learn from my mistake on that one and hold that in position. Okay, good. No, not good. Ah. Okay, is that good? That's good. Now, I'm gonna clean this up again because I have been told to not try and use solder mask as glue. And I know it's not a glue, but I'm just thinking it's gonna help keep those pads in position. Okay, I am going to put a little bit of mask on the edge there. Actually did more than I meant to. Actually like the way that this one went better. This one's too much. Okay, that's okay. Now I'm gonna bake it um, under UV light. I actually have a high powered UV light that's not at my workbench and that'll allow me to cure that really quickly without the use of any additional heat. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, this looks mostly pretty good. Let's come back under here and see about putting this part on. Okay, I think that's going to work. Now let's start with these little ones here. And get some more light there. Maybe. Come on, light. Okay. I swear, every time I open up UV mask, I end up getting it on my hands. Okay, let's solder that guy there. And that guy there. And then, before I do my rebuilt pads, I'm gonna do the through hole ones. And 
and let's try and do that. That's pretty good. And then this one. These are really just the uh, anchors, and I want to make sure I get those soldered really good so that no one can push too hard on my delicate work here. because these two in the back they're not really going to hold it steady so I want those to be in really good okay hot! oh my gosh that was hot why did I do that? <laughs> okay I want to see if that's sturdy or not. Was it still melted? Because it seemed loose. I think it might have still been a little bit melted. Okay. Let's now solder these back legs. And see if this works. Okay, we're gonna go heavy right there and right here. Okay, and I know those aren't really anchoring to anything. And I think and maybe I should put some glue in here. I don't know that these through hole ones got soldered real good. I'm gonna I want to try and do those ones in a little bit better. Put some flux in. That'll help with the uh, flow of the solder into the holes. I'm going to grab my uh, big iron to heat the board a little bit better so that that flows in a little bit better. And I'm going to flood a little bit more solder in there. Make sure it's really going through the holes. Okay, that's good. And maybe I'll do the same thing on this other side here. I'll do a little bit more flux. And I'll make sure that we get lots of solder in there. Okay, that should be pretty sturdy. I'm going to let it cool down. Now I'm going to clean it up with a brush and some IPA. And there's not too much mess here. Okay, so let's take off the tape here and I want to do this delicately I don't want to rip any ribbons that looks pretty okay I think a little bit of flux might oh dang it I, <laughs> I got it on my hand I said I would do it every time I open up solder mask because what do I do? I do, gotta clean it up. And then I don't. And then it gets on my hands. Every freaking time. And then I got green hands for the rest of the day. All right, back to what I was doing. What was I doing? Oh, I was cleaning. Okay, so then I'm going to take this tape out, set that back down where it goes. I'm going to put that screw back in. I almost lost the screw to the fume extractor. Okay, now 
pretty good. I think it's pretty good. I'm gonna plug it in now. Okay, this is my moment of truth. I'm going to plug the cord in. Oh shit. What did I do? Oh my gosh. I feel so dumb. I flooded too much solder in there and it got inside the port. Arrgh. Moments you feel stupid. <laughs> I'm like, let's put more solder in. Okay. I wonder... Now what do I do? Can I wick that out? I have my doubts. We'll be right back. Okay. I was able to stick a little bit of wick in there with my micro soldering iron and get it out. You know, this is really just how you know that this is like an honest video and not that I like pre-checked everything and worked 30 minutes off camera to uh, present a working repair. Sometimes you make mistakes, sometimes repairs aren't successful. Let's see what happens here. Okay, will it fit in now? That's the question. Ah, it's working, but it's not going in all the way. I probably still got a little bit of work to do to clear up that space. All right, let me try that. What am I doing here? Hang on. Okay, there was a little bit of solder left stuck in there, but this should be the final test. And it goes in all the way and it charges and it doesn't come uncharging. And that's what we call a successful repair. Hopefully you found it helpful. Uh, if you would like to see me make more videos, comment, like, subscribe. That will motivate me to keep filming my repair work as I do it. Thank you for watching. All right, and this is bonus content. If you stayed past my closing remarks, you'll remember uh, if you listened to me talking to someone else who was working here, uh, they had a guitar that a customer wanted to buy, but we knew that the tilt sensor didn't work. And um, that's how you activate star power when you're playing the game. And I wanna show you what's, what's made up here. Um, okay, this right here, is the tilt board and it's got four of these little sensors personally i think it's overkill but they got them positioned in different ways so that it'll definitely pick up a uh, tilt so i'm going to replace all four i'm going to show you what the tilt sensor is what it does now this is a replacement tilt sensor and at first glance it just looks like a capacitor but it's not uh it's got a little metal ball inside there and when it's on its side or upside down, here, let me grab my multimeter in continuity mode. You'll see that there is no continuity, no beep, right? But then when it's right side up, I'm just gonna stick that into the mat. Then the ball that's inside of there uh, bridges the connection between these two legs and then you'll have continuity, hear it? And that is how, that is how uh, star power works on these old guitars. Um, when you tilt it, then those balls make a connection and it activates the uh, switch and bada bing, you got star power in the game. So uh, it's not a difficult repair. I'm just going to take this board out and replace all four of those sensors. So I'm just gonna first start by clearing the holes where I removed this from the controller so that I can put it back in easily. And then we're gonna desolder each of the four of these. And this solder is really easy to work with. I don't need to add any low melt or any other mixtures to this to get these to come free. What I need is for it to be steady. And 
That's two and a half. Four, three. Three and a half. Four. Okay, so those should all come out. So what I'm gonna do is I take, I'll just do one at a time. Uh, there's one. And then I'll take my replacement and stick it in there. I like about these ones is they got a cradle that helps keep them positioned exactly where you want them. Yeah, why don't I just take them all out first so that I can clean the board. That one's stuck. There it goes. Okay. There's my four bad parts. Okay, those are all going in the trash. And I'm going to clean this board up real quick. And that's probably boring, so we'll just snap forward. All right, now I can put these replacement switches in one at a time. I'm gonna start with that one that was the hardest to get out, just because of the angle of it. And it's gonna be the hardest to get in also. Oh my gosh. Go in the hole. This is your home. What are you too good for your home? Who knows the movie quote? There it goes. All right, then we can solder that in. All right, that's one. And I don't need to bore you with the details. Let's just jump forward to having all four done. All right, and all four are done. Clip the tails off. And now you can see, uh, I guess I should clean up this side of the board as well. Someone will be bothered if I don't, probably. I'd be bothered if I didn't. Okay. All right, that's done. So, <clears throat> I'm not gonna go through the testing with this, but that is how you replace the star power tilt sensors on, that was a PS2 guitar. Easy stuff. 